And now I am honored to introduce our founder and CEO. Charlie's story began more than 15 years ago when he started Ambry above a motorcycle shop with one genetic test and a single vision to create a business built on strong science and excellent customer service. Thanks to Charlie's inspiring leadership and tireless work, that one test has evolved into one of our most comprehensive suites of genetic testing available in the world. More importantly, Charlie believes in collaboration. And nowhere is that more evident than throughout the halls of Ambry, which is now four to five buildings throughout this, this area of Elisa Viejo. T together, we work in partnership with clinicians and the scientific community to progress medicine. And on that note, here's Charlie Dunlap. Oh. So there were some prepared remarks for me, but um, I didn't sleep last night. I got a little bit sick and didn't sleep and uh, totally forgot all of my lines. So, <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, thank you, Dr. Bridget. Uh, you know, when I started this company in uh, 1999, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty true what she said, that that's, that's been the focus. But that, that wasn't really the original reason that I started the company. You know, I, I uh, had been an academic scientist for you know, almost a decade and um, had some success. And, um, but you know, I just, I just saw the politics and I just saw the way things actually worked um, in academia. And, you know, and I believed in the ideals of academia and collaboration and, and you know, free-spirited ideas and, you know, debate. Um, and you get in real science in the real, in the real trenches of what it's really like, and it's not like that at all. And, uh, you know, I, I just thought, you know, maybe we should start our own company. And we wouldn't have to deal with all this anymore. Me and my friends can have a lab where we could do things the way we want to do them, the way we think, you know, instead of going to lunch and complaining about the way things are, and another person taking credit for another one of our ideas, Let's, let's do our own thing, and let's make sure we kind of create the environment where those kind of thefts and, and, and petty politics would never exist. And, and um, you know, in the last month, uh, I have cancer, so I, I came back from uh, uh, Hawaii, where I live part-time, um, through my recovery from chemo and everything, and I, I came back, and um, we had started this. Actually, it was Bridgette and I had the vision for the Super Lab uh, four years ago. And we, we came back and uh, all of this effort, you know, the super lab's not just the lab. It's not just the steel and the walls and the electricity and the robots and all that. It's a computer system. You know, we found that all the third party vendors that were creating computer software to try to do this stuff, they had never seen our kind of sample volumes, you know? <laughs> they thought a high sample volume was like 50 samples a day. I mean, we, we shatter those records. If there, there was a 50 sample day at Ambry, I'd have a heart attack. But, uh, you know, there's, you know, nobody, so we, we, we said, you know, we have to create an entirely new environment, an entirely new ecosystem within this company. And uh, I can't tell you how much the collaborative environment helped that process along, that, that, you know, you would imagine science opposed to regulatory, opposed to financial, opposed to operations, opposed to, and all these tensions. We don't have that tension here at Ambry. Um, the hallways here, there's just a vibrancy and a life and, you know, I, I, I'm, I, you know, my brother and Steve Swanson, uh, Manny are the original, are, are the four of the original seven that were here. You know, guys, we created the environment we always wanted. And it's, it's evident by what we built. Um, and it's evident by, by the lab. I mean, uh, you know, we've been through the lab and you guys haven't seen it yet. I've been through almost every great lab in this industry or, you know, in academics and in professional labs. Um, we have the best lab in the world. You know, I don't want to be too arrogant about it, but I've never seen a lab as good as ours. I, I don't want to say the best because, you know, you never know, but, but I've never seen a lab like this. And, and some of the vendors who've seen all the labs in the world, outfitting them with machines, keep coming up to me and going, dude, you got a good lab. So, <laughs> so um, I think that's, uh, you know, we didn't get investment. We don't have a big banker. This is all done um, through cash flow. It's all done through hard work. It's all done through collaboration. It's all done through, um, and we don't cut corners here. Everything that we do is the most solid, it's perfect. And um, we couldn't have done that without collaboration. We couldn't have done that without departments sharing ideas and sharing ideals and sharing pain together and getting through problems together. Um, the Super Lab is, is um, again, it's not just, it's not just a, a laboratory. 
It's everything. It's the dream. It's imagine your child's mind about when you first started in this field of what you'd want if you were a scientist. We have it. Everything's about the change for this company. Everything's about the change for this industry. And if you think about, you know, our timing couldn't be better, right? You know, I don't want to get too Pollyannish, but right, 10,000 years from now, people are going to look back at America and the American empire. And sort of like how we look back at Greece and we think of philosophy, or you look back at France and you think of the Enlightenment, right? Italy, you think of the Renaissance. People are going to look back at America 10,000 years from now. And they're going to think, you know, wow, imagine an era before robots. Imagine an era before computers, right? They're going, to, they're going to also wonder, imagine an era when there was still disease, right? And, and the genomic revolution that everybody was talking about and the promise of the Human Genome Project with all the hyperbolic marketing that happened then, we actually are at the point where we can actually start to achieve those goals and not just put fluff pieces out in the media for real, real cures all disease. And this is the greatest lab in this industry. Are we going to be a footnote in history? I don't know. We might. If we can do the job and we can get the sample volumes, we might be able to do this job. And, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that a better group of people with a better spirit in the hallways of collaboration and hard work and doing things ethically and putting yourself in other people's shoes and being humble Thank God it's people like us that are winning this fight. So anyway, I, I, I thank you all for coming here, and um, I can't wait until you guys see this laboratory. And I can't wait until you guys uh, just absorb the day and what we've done. It's, it's absolutely um, incredible. And um, I don't know what else to say. It's absolutely an incredible thing that we've done. Thank you, everybody who was involved. Um, we actually have hope now, which is which we were completely out of hope. And as parents, when you have two kids with special needs, you're not sure what's going on. I mean, hope is the, one of the most important emotions to have in your family, to have something to hold on to, to move forward. Um, so just on behalf of myself and my husband and our kids, we just want to say thank you to Charlie. Thank you to Ambry. Thank you guys so much for everything. And um, we wouldn't be here today without you. So thank you so much. So um, I guess I'm closing this out. I want to thank uh, Mayor Munez um, and um, or Munzing, sorry, <laughs> Let me real quick, and, and everybody else here, uh, all of our dignitaries and everybody who's here. Um, it's been uh, kind of interesting for me to listen to everybody and the stories. Um, you know, it's it's it's. Somebody told me, oh, you you didn't tell how many firsts to the market we've had. Um, I always. I'm not a really, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty humble person. I don't really like to, to brag even, even when we deserve it, but um, you know, maybe I should for once. <laughs> but we've, we've been first to market with every major innovation in this industry for 16 years. And if we haven't been first, we were just scooped by like a couple of weeks or a month or something. Like we've been that lab for 16 years with no funding with over our heads with sample volumes that we don't know how we're going to get all these samples through the door. Um, I, I can't fully imagine how much pain and how much creativity and how much work and how much humility that is all, all of that combined has dropped in on, on, on the soul of this company. And I just, um, this lab that we're opening up represents never having a turnaround time problem again, never having a capacity issue again, Never having, you know, CEOs doing pipetting himself on the bench in the middle of the night again. Uh, and sorry for screwing up that one time, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's everything. And it's coming at a very um, nice time in the industry where the actual promise of the Human Genome Project, all the hyperbole, all the marketing, all the stuff that people talked about, what we were really celebrating was statistical evidence what gene is associated with what disease? And we now have the vehicle to do all of this and to continue to innovate and continue to launch things first and to continue to do everything um, and keep our collaborative, humble spirits going forward because that's got us first to market in just about everything we've done. So you know what? Let's go open this lab.
no more turnaround time problems unless it be a 